Welcome to the St. John's United Methodist Church online worship service. Our purpose is to love God and to love others. I'm so glad that you're with us today. On Monday the 18th at 6 p.m., we are going to have a virtual single board meeting to talk about when and how to reopen the church. Our communications director, Michelle Kuzno, will be sending out the invitations. If you would like to tune in and observe or contribute, and you don't get that information, please contact the church office and talk with Michelle. I hope that you have been enjoying these online services. We have been able to do them because of some equipment that we have been renting. We would like to continue to provide this sort of online experience even after we reopen the church. To do that, we need to purchase the equipment. It's, it's a couple of thousand dollars, and so if you would like to help with that, if you would, uh, well, we're going to receive a special offering, and if you would just mark that, uh, indicate that in some way so that we would know that it's to go towards that ministry. But now, let us worship the Lord together.
morning, Stacy. Hello, Good Miss morning. Catherine. Hey, Stacy. Hey. Good morning, boys and girls. Today, I want to talk about things you can't see. So I want you to hold this for me. Boomer, I want you to hold this for me, okay? All right. Now, there's lots of things that you can't see, but... Oh, hey, did you feel that? Yeah. Ooh. What was that? What was it? Air. Air? Mm -hmm. Oh, where did it come from? A fan. Can you see, Boomer? Yeah. A fan? Mm -hmm. Are you sure it comes from a fan? Yes. I've got a fan. You do? Yeah. Does it air come from? lettuce. <laughs> oh, well, how do you know that air is coming from that fan? Um, because I can feel the air coming from... From it. Oh yeah, and look, your your streamers moved. And look, did you see my hair? Yeah. And my hair moved. And he has moving. Yeah. The streamers the, there it goes. The streamers moving. Your streamer moved. Your streamer didn't move. Oh, there it goes. Oh. There it goes. It moved. <laughs> there it it moved. Goes. Yes. <laughs> so, what moved our streamers in my hair? Air. Air. We can't see the air, but do we know for sure it's there? Yes. Well, yeah. Otherwise, we were going. <gasps> well, that's one way you know. That is. That's one way you know that there's air because we're breathing it. But we can also feel it, can't we? Yes. You feel a little colder now? Mm -hmm. I do too. Yeah. So you're sure there's wind there, even if you can't see it, right? Yes. Well, you know what that reminds me of in the Bible? Why? Yeah. I'll give you a hint. It's an amazing gift that Jesus left for us when he returned to heaven to be with his Father. Can you guess? Um, Can you guess? Well, I had a question about that. What would that be? Last week, you said Jesus was like a map. Uh-huh. Well, we can't see him, so how can he be a map? Well, that was the gift he left us. He left us a map? He left us something even better. Oh? Yeah. Jesus promised us a helper, and that helper is the Holy Spirit. We don't see it because it lives in our hearts, but just like the wind, we can feel it when oh. it gives us comfort and help. So, this Holy Spirit is very much like the wind. We can feel it, in our hearts, and we can feel it in our minds, and we can feel it when we accept Jesus into our lives. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that a great gift? That's amazing. I think it's a wonderful gift. I think it is too. Have you ever felt the Holy Spirit? Yes. When? Um, when I when we were doing the um activity last year. Yeah. And if you've ever even helped somebody. You've probably felt the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm so very glad that Jesus left us that wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit. So, can we pray? Yes. Oh, okay. Of course. Right. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit. It gives us pleasure and comfort and hope. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can I keep the streamer? Yes, you may. There's a cat I want to torment. <laughs> the streamer <laughs> is all yours. Bye. 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 Bye.
We come now to a time of corporate prayer together. In your times of prayer today and throughout the week, please remember the family of Celeste Hudson. This is Jane Norman's mother. She has passed away. Would also like to lift up Tina Lahan, who is continuing to have some serious medical issues. Uh, supposed to have surgery this past week. I'm not sure if that was actually happened or not uh, at the time that this is being viewed. Uh, it may already have taken place, it may not, but uh, we need to be praying for, for Tina and Jean and for that family. Johnny Kovar and her family have had a number of very difficult experiences involving life and death. And so if you would remember the Kovar family in your prayers. Please be in prayer for the children. Pray for our graduating seniors. This is not the graduation that they had hoped to have, but it's still an important time in their life. And so we want to lift them up. Please remember the men and women of the armed services and their families. Join with them in praying for peace. Pray for our first responders and their families. Pray for the doctors and the researchers, the caregivers. Please pray for our leaders and elected officials. Pray for St. John's as well as all of the Christian churches that we are the body of Christ in the world today. Pray for the people who are struggling because of the pandemic, some because of the shutdown, some because of the virus, but it's still painful. We want to um, also give thanks for our families and our friends and the many blessings that God shares with us. At this time, uh, let's pause for a time of silent prayer, and then we'll have a pastoral prayer of the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. Most loving God, you were, you are, you will always be. You are the strong foundation upon which we can stand, a sure hope in time of trouble. Help us to not be afraid, to be aware, to be involved, but not afraid. Thank you, Lord, for time with family where we can strengthen bonds of love, where we can get to know each other once again, where we can slow down the hurry and the hustle and the bustle and take the time to simply be still, to be with you, to be with the people we love. For some folks that has not been a blessing and we pray for them. We pray for those who are hurting, who are grieving, who are dying, who are lost, angry, frustrated, confused, troubled, persecuted. We pray for hope, for healing, for wholeness. Please help us to be the best people that we can be, especially in difficult times. We thank you for healing that has taken place and for the little blessings that you continue to sprinkle throughout our lives. Please open our hearts, open our eyes, open our minds that we might see these things, perceive them, and with joy to share them. You know us and you love us. And so whether we write our prayers down, say them silently, shout them from the mountaintop, we know that you hear them, you understand them, and in love you do respond. And so it is that we offer these prayers today through the power of the love of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If 
I told you my story, you would hear hope that wouldn't let go. And if I told you my story, you would hear love that never gave up. And if I told you my story, That is greater than all my sin Of when justice was served And when mercy wins Of the kindness of Jesus That draws me in Oh, to tell you my story Is to tell of Him And if I told my story, you would hear victory over the enemy. And if I told you my story, you would hear freedom that was won for me. And if I told you my story, you would hear life overcome the grave if I should speak then let it be of the grace that is greater than all my sin of when justice was served and when mercy wins of the kindness of Jesus that draws me in oh to tell my story is to tell of him. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. That is greater than all my sin Of when justice was served And when mercy wins Of the kindness of Jesus That draws me in Oh, to tell you my story Is to tell of the grace That is greater than all my sin Of when justice was served and when mercy wins of the kindness of Jesus that draws me in, oh, to tell you my story is to tell of him. Oh, to tell you my story is to tell of him. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Our scripture today comes from the New Testament book, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 22. Now, who will harm you if you're eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. 
For Christ also suffered. For sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight, persons were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you. Not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. May God add God's blessing to the reading of God's word. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? Have you got a pencil and paper? No matter what good you do, someone somewhere will find fault with it. And if they find it threatening enough, they will try to stop you or hurt you, or possibly even kill you. So, yes, there are those who would harm us for doing what is good. Now, Scripture goes on to say, even if you answer that last question with a yes, it is better to suffer for doing good than to suffer because you are doing evil. Now, there is value in doing what is right in doing good. And by doing right, I mean being loving and kind, generous and merciful. I'm talking about comforting the grieving, visiting those who are in prison or lonely, offering a cup of cool water to the thirsty, feeding the hungry. Those things that Jesus not only taught us, but showed us how to do. When I was growing up, saying something like, well, there's value in doing right, would have earned you, well, here's the most obvious thing to say in the world award. And nowadays, if you say that, uh, you know, doing right is a good thing, you might get up, duh. However, as, as Christians, we can no longer just assume that the majority of people understand what we mean when we say things like, there is value in doing what is right, they're going to want to argue about it. So we have to be ready to explain and defend our faith in Christ, or we will be dismissed as irrelevant. You know, if we make a statement, it's important for us to do what is right, they'll say, well, what is right? Well, doing the Christian thing. I'm a Christian, it's what I do. And they say, well, why is that important? And if our answer is, oh, because it is, they'll shut us down. They won't listen. Fortunately, we don't have to have everybody agree with what we believe or what we're doing. What we do have to have is you do what is right. You keep your conscience clear. This is what scripture tells us. You can't make anybody else do that, but you can take care of you. So do what is right. Keep your conscience clear. Then when someone gives you grief for being a Christian, you don't have to feel guilty or ashamed. Now, baptism is a way for the church and for the individual being baptized to claim God's promise and to claim the seal of the Holy Spirit. It is a profession, a statement of faith in God's love, in power, in God's forgiveness and redemption. It is a guarantee by the Holy Spirit 
when I'm talking with folks that have not been raised in the faith and they want to get their baby baptized, I, I have to be very clear that this is not a magic thing that we're doing. I actually had one young mother said, well, you know, I, I have uh, two children and the youngest one was baptized and he sleeps through the night and is well behaved, but the older one, I, I never got around to doing that and he's just been a terror. And so I think if we can get him baptized, that might sort him out. And I hated to have to tell her, it's like, well, it doesn't quite work that way. It's not a magic thing, but it is an important thing. It has significance to be baptized is to not only claim those promises of salvation, but to be claimed by the community of faith. It is a channel. It is a means of God's grace. A sign of belonging. As a community of faith, we too are channels of God's grace. To strengthen, encourage, and sometimes correct each other with gentleness and with love. And we've got to remember that. We must always speak the truth with love. And we should reach out beyond the faith community to share the risen Christ. It'd be like if, if doctors went to all of that medical school training and then the only people they ever treated were other doctors. That doesn't make sense. And as Christians, we, we study the Bible and we go to, to, to Bible studies and small groups and we, we work on our discipleship and grow in the faith. And the purpose of doing that is not just so that we can witness to each other. It's so that we can go into the world and reach the people who don't know that God knows them and God loves them, that they, they don't know that Jesus Christ is the answer to that emptiness that's inside them, an answer to the sin and the death that is all around us. By doing what is right, what is good, the sorts of things that Jesus showed us how to do and by proclaiming the gospel, those two things together are very powerful. If we just say the words, but we don't live by them, nobody listens. And sometimes if we just do the good work, but we never mention Christ, we never explain why this is happening, we lose an opportunity. Please note that at no time are we encouraged to try to, to force someone to agree or accept or acknowledge anything that we claim to be true. Jesus never did that, and yet so often the church has been guilty of doing that very thing. There's an old legend that when Cortez was going through and slaughtering the Aztecs, there was a, a chief and he said, claim Christ as savior, I'll cut off your hands. And that happened and the Aztec chief would never say, I claim Christ. And Cortez says, why, why wouldn't you say this? Don't you wanna to go to heaven? And he said, if you're going to be there, no. We can't fall into that trap. We cannot make anybody believe or accept what we believe and accept, but we can invite them. We can show them a better way. And the way we show them a better way is by having a life that is filled with joy and with love. If we live a life that is saved, excuse me, that is saved, that is redeemed, if we are living the truth of Christ's love, then people will pay attention. They'll say, I want what you have. Trust in the power of Christ's saving love. 
except the Holy Spirit. It gives us strength, it gives us courage, it gives us guidance and wisdom. Do what is right. Do what is good. Even if it doesn't seem to be making a difference at all, don't underestimate the power of small steps. You never know if that one little thing that you did has had a huge impact on someone else's life. You may have been the little thing that piled on top of a bunch of other things was finally what helped them to take that step of commitment and say, you know, I do believe, I do claim Christ. As followers of Christ, it is what we are to do. It is who we are to be. So don't be ashamed. Be proud in a good way of being a Christian, a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ. And be ready when somebody says, well, why do you follow why are you a Christian? Be able to tell them with love and with joy and with confidence, I'm a Christian because. My example, I'm a Christian because I know God knows me and God loves me. And that changed my world. May everything we do be in service to Christ. Amen. within my heart a melody Jesus whisper sweet and low fear not I am with thee peace be still in all of life's ebb and flow Jesus 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 sweetest name I know fills my every longing keeps me singing as I filled my heart with pain. Jesus swept across the broken strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Though sometimes he leads through Trials fall across the way Though sometimes the path seems rough and steep See his footprints all the way Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Fills my every longing Keeps me singing as I go Resting neath his sheltering wing, always looking on his smiling face. That is why I shout and sing. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to.
Thank you so much for joining us today. I pray that you have received a blessing that will walk with you not just through today, but throughout the week, a blessing that you can share with others. Please invite folks to tune in. If you heard something that resonated with you, pass that along. If you shared Christ's love with someone this past week in some way through some act of kindness, uh, however you did it, raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you for continuing to make a difference. Well, here comes the blessing. And receive this as we prepare to proclaim the good news of the risen Christ. May God fill us with love and laughter, with grace and peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. We'll see you next time.